Hi everybody, welcome back. Jonathan here with another video and today we're going to be looking at Enscape for Vectorworks particularly. Um, and Enscape is an amazing real-time rendering software that just works very seamlessly with your CAD software and it literally sits there like a plugin on the side. It's very simple to use, produces amazing renderings and I think you'll just be blown away by the quality and the speed of the rendering. We now have great animation features on the Mac as well. So stay tuned for some really exciting features with Enscape for VectorX. Well, everybody, let's take a look at our final piece of real-time rendering software that works really well with many bits of software, but of course, VectorX especially, and it's Enscape. Now, the beauty of Enscape, it works both on Windows and Apple Mac these days. And I'm going to give you a bit of a live demo of a project which I've basically worked with using Vectorworks and Enscape on and just show you the kind of renderings that we were able to get really quite rapidly as well. So this was a really nice little kitchen diner project. If I click on my hyperlink, that'll open up the model. Let's just give you a quick round the uh, model as well in Vectorworks first. Now, you can see that we took a rather isolated space and basically worked out the design. Now, this was a practice in uh, Chicago that I've done some work with, BBA Architects, and they just do the most amazing, beautiful one-off homes. And this was really, you know, a small area of what this huge project, but what we did was really kind of modeled the kitchen in quite a lot of detail, as you can see. There was lots of intricate cabinetry, um, things like the lovely cooker as well. And basically it was really important for the client that we kind of were able to set up these views in Vectorworks and basically kind of look at how the model looked. Um, at the moment you'll notice that I've got my lights on, but do remember of course if I want to only display those in wireframe I can turn that off as well. Um, and these little save views were really, really helpful, not only in the modeling process, but in the kind of early stage design presentation process as well. So I think you'll agree, you know, this looks kind of realistic. Um, well, not realistic, it looks quite sort of graphical, but you know, still very, very helpful in explaining the design. So in a minute, we're gonna hop over to Enscape and show you how these can look when you're in Enscape itself. So if all you want to do is launch Enscape, simply load in your Enscape software, and you'll notice this is available up in the uh, Tools Partner Products, Enscape and you can add this to your workspace very very straightforwardly. Now you've got to have an Enscape license There's either monthly or annual licenses. They also do a floating and a basically uh, network sort of license if you like and also a fixed seat license too. So the beauty of Enscape is that it's embedded into your design software. As I say, it works with obviously Vectorworks, SketchUp and other modelers as well. But let's go ahead. So I'm gonna launch Enscape simply by clicking a single button. Uh, basically, let's click and launch our Enscape. You'll notice that on my other screen, if I just move this across, um, it's basically opening up. So let me just pop out a full screen for a second and that'll enable me to bring my Enscape screen across. Okay. So the very first thing that's happening is our Enscape license is uh, kind of just loading up the model from Vectorworks. So the very first time you do uh, click the button to start, it takes a few seconds to do the export. Okay, but then you'll notice that it basically loads the model really, really quickly in a very realistic real-time rendering. Okay, so we're really almost here. Now it's interesting that Enscape was um, sort of collaborating with Chaos recently and Enscape has been taken over essentially by Chaos. Okay, so you'll notice that we've now got uh, the view in Enscape in our model here. Now I can do the usual thing. So I can basically use my W key and kind of move through the space. I can go side to side using my kind of WASDA keys and so on as well. And now that it's actually pre-rendered, I can kind of pan my view around quite nicely and sort of move the space. Now you notice that if I do move to a bit that wasn't pre-rendered, it will take a few seconds to refine. Um, but this is fair, fairly sort of common with a lot of these renderers. Um, but if you look at the kind of level of quality that we're getting, almost out of the box as it were, um, I think this is very impressive. You know, what we've got here is really nice sort of real-time lighting, certainly very good global illumination and things like the shadows as well. We've got this lovely sunlight coming into the model as well. Now you notice, as I say, once I've kind of let go, um, the sort of model, if you like, uh, refines itself. And basically I can kind of navigate around. So let's sort of see if we can kind of spin the model around a bit. Let's just pan around to that view. 
As I say, you'll notice initially there's a little bit of noise, um, as you would expect to see in most real-time renderers, but then this will very, very rapidly refine once that kind of just gets a bit of processing under its belt. And you can see that this is sort of really kind of rapidly improving as well. Now, there's lots of nice controls with Enscape. Um, so just to touch on a few of these, you notice all the buttons at the top here. So I'll kind of run through a few of these in this little demo. So actually the very first thing that I might want to do is adjust the time of day. So to do that, I can actually either use the U key or the I key on the keyboard. And you'll notice that down here, I've got a little clock with basically the time of day. So as I kind of move through to nighttime, get quite a different render. Um, if I go round again, let's click and go all the way through. Look at that lovely sunlight coming into the model. And again, the other way to do this is hold shift down and basically right click. Now that's quite nice because you can kind of really control the lighting. Um, with the U and the I key, it's a bit more jumpy. So now I can kind of control that lighting in beautiful real time. And as I say, it will kind of, as soon as I let go, it will refine and the noise will start to kind of disappear and so on. Now, of course, when we actually do the final, final quality rendering, um, this will be even higher quality. So let's have a go at this. I quite like this view. So if I like the view, I can basically go up to my button at the top here and I can literally click create screenshot. Let's just click OK on that. I might want to change my default folder. So let's just go ahead and just put this into my webinar folder. And basically you'll notice that now we can basically start exporting this rendering. So um, you'll notice now when it actually does the final rendering, of course, the refinement really kind of kicks in and a lot of that noise disappears altogether. But wait till you see the final image, they are pretty stunning. Um, so this is one of the beauties of Enscape. Not only is the image quality absolutely superb out the box without me really having to do a lot at all, um, is the speed of the rendering is actually really reasonable as well. You know, both in the viewport in terms of real time, but also in terms of the actual kind of exporting of that particular image. So I think you'll be uh, very impressed by the quality once we actually bring this up in a moment. So we'll just let that render out and then we'll have a look at these final images in a second as well. Okay, so here you can see the final image in all its glory, which only took literally a few moments to render. And I think you'll agree, it looks pretty stunning. Now, one of the other things that I really like about Enscape, instead of uh, other software, which you basically use slightly sort of independently to Vectorworks, um, I really like the way with Enscape, it can kind of sit side by side. So let me show you how this works. So what I'm gonna do is basically go and can click this synchronize view button up here. Now you notice when I do that, I get exactly the view that I've got in my Vectorworks window. Um, a really nice little tip here is also, if you go into your palette options, we can actually put auto hiding on for a second and that will give us a nice sort of clear window and you can see the views are pretty similar. Now the real beauty is I can still get back down to my save views and if I do want to jump onto those, I can basically click into Vectorworks and scroll through. And you'll notice that Enscape does exactly the same thing to basically duplicate that view as well. So let's just have another go at that. Let's just sort of pan around to this other view here. You'll notice that Vectorworks is moving around in real time, as is Enscape as well. As I say, uh, depending on what processor and graphics card you have, the refinement on the Enscape will be a bit faster on quicker computers. Um, I'm using a Mac M1 Pro from a couple of years ago. Still a really great machine, but I only got the low spec 16 gig of RAM. Um, I would definitely find the M3 probably a bit quicker for this sort of work as well. But this is one of the really nice aspects of Enscape, this sort of dual ability to navigate in your software. You imagine if this was on my other screen full size while I'm working in Vectorworks full screen as well. Okay, fantastic. Now, the other thing that I do really, really like with Enscape is if I basically navigate through, let's say I navigate through to a, a different view. Let's sort of pan around. Let's just look at this completely different view. And basically, let's say I would like to capture this. So this isn't currently in Vectorworks. So all I need to do is go to view management and I can click create view. I've also got a really nice opportunity to do a bit of refinement on things like the lighting. So let's just see if we can get some light coming into that kitchen. And um, that's looking really nice onto that cooker there. And when I'm ready, I can basically click create view. Okay, so I've changed my perspective mode in Vectorworks. That's now basically given me the ability, as I say, to kind of scroll through that lovely time of day, do what I want with the lighting in Enscape. And also when I'm ready, click create. 
Now what that will do is basically send that back to Vectorware. So let's kind of set up a few other views as well. Um, this is sort of quite a wide angle kind of view. Uh, but that's okay. I'm quite interested in to see the view too from the kitchen kind of sink as it were. Quite like the look of that. So let's go for it again. Quick create. Um, just adjust that lighting. Let's have that light coming in from a different direction. That's quite nice. We can adjust the azimuth as well and sort of get that light really penetrating down into the model there. Just sort of tweak that view. Okay, and when I'm ready, you'll notice that this comes up. But if you just basically click on the lock there, that will disappear and you can click create. So back into Vectorworks, you'll notice that if I pop down to my side here, I've now got these two brand new save views, which were the ones that I just saved. So this is a very cool feature. If you're trying to view match, that's really a nice Enscape feature, a definite winner. Now, there's quite a lot more to Enscape than this as well. Um, so let's just review this in full screen mode a second. And um, basically, I just want to go back to one of my original views, which was a particularly nice one. So I can just double click on that view management there, and that will basically take me to that view. So this is one of my favorite views here. Okay, so as well as rendering using a very realistic rendering, if we just shut down the view management for a second. Let's just pop that away. So actually, I, will, I don't need to create that view. I'll just close it down. Basically, I'm going to go into something called the visual settings. And you'll notice with Enscape, you have some really nice visual settings in here. Um, you've got the white card mode, and this does this lovely sort of white card render. So if you don't want to show the client sort of too much realism with materials and color schemes, this is a good choice. Um, and if you want to make it a little bit more sketch-like, you can put on the outlines here as well. And this looks really, really quite cool, a bit more cartoony as well. You'll notice that you also have things like the depth of field and things like that. So let's just go back to our realistic view. Um, let's maybe tone down those edges a little bit. Um, you can boost up things like exposure just sort of get that image a little bit brighter and very, very easy to bring in things like the depth of field. And just note how this is sort of blurring out in the background in real time now. So a bit like Vectorworks in that respect, but you know, maybe a bit more realistic in terms of the uh, kind of quality of the render there. Now, there's loads of other things you can do with Enscape that basically you can't do with all the other software. So as well as the usual sort of things like vignetting and chromatic aberration, um, we've also got the ability when we do the output stage, uh, let's just tweak the colors a little bit and tone that down or we'll go the other way. So very, very good image control, color temperature as well. Um, we can just reset those as well if we want to just by clicking on those. Finally, if we want to change things like the sky and the HDRI, which won't make a lot of difference for this image, uh, we could do. Maybe that will make a, a, a sort of tiny bit of difference to the inside. But the most important thing I want to show you here was we go to the output stage. Um, if we select PNG files, you'll notice that we can actually apply not only alpha channels, but we can also export um, all the different sort of depth channels as well. So I'll show you an image, uh, not necessarily this particular image, but how this was done using all the different alpha channels. And um, if you know anything about sort of CGI and sort of post editing, you'll know that having alpha channels as well as all the different sort of depth channels and things like this are really important and they make it much easier to edit the image. Okay, so what we'll do, let's go ahead and render this one out. So I'm just going to base it with a single click, click create screenshot. It's going to ask us where to render again and off we go. Let's render. Okay, so after just a few minutes, we've got this wonderful image with really beautiful quality. We've got the material ID as well, and also the object ID, so you can select different materials and objects in the model, as well as the depth as well. So all of these for your post editing are wonderful. Okay, so the final couple of things I would like to just show you briefly with Enscape are that we have a really nice material library that you can access. Um, and basically, I won't show you how to use these today, but you can always enhance your Vectorworks uh, objects using these. There's a really, really big library of excellent materials, and I really like the uh, way they've done these. They're very high quality, and all of these are editable as well. Okay, but what I really want to show you just briefly was the Enscape Asset Library. So here we've got this wonderful asset library, and what's really nice is I can basically just drag and drop these uh, assets in. So basically, let's just click and place one of those in my Vectorworks model. And you'll notice that what it does, it creates basically a prop in Vectorworks, an image prop, if you like, or a proxy. 
And then in Enscape it places the real thing, which is a very high resolution. Let's just go ahead and do that again. Let's get another asset here of this lady here. So we'll kind of place her and we can also take the opportunity to rotate her a little bit as well. And basically just wait for a second and then she'll appear. So this is a really nice way to prop out your models with all sorts of uh, extra accessories and things like this. So you see if we can find something nice for this sort of table here. So scroll down and let's have a bowl of uh, strawberries or a bowl of tomatoes. Let's say we'd like this. We'll just pop it onto that table and you'll notice quite rapidly it will appear into the view there. Um, I'm not quite synced on my view, but if I was, you would see exactly the same thing. So, you know, the ability of these sort of proxies make quite a big difference in that you can basically really kind of prop out your model uh, with high quality assets without kind of loading up massive file sizes in Vectorworks, but still retain a lot of quality here in Enscape. So the very final thing I did want to show you is animation. Now, if you would like to animate in, uh, Enscape, this is something we can now do both on Mac and Windows, and it's really cool. You basically go to the video editor, and this will open up. Now, all you need to do, honestly, is basically click plus to create your first keyframe. So let's move forward to a new position, and I think I'll just kind of move forward over here, slide across a little bit, and that'll do just for this very simple demonstration, and let's click plus to edit another keyframe. So if I rewind, you'll notice that if I click on the play button, and um, basically now I can play through using Enscape in real time, this little animation. So let's just do that one more time. So we'll play through those different keyframes there. Um, now I could add a bit more time, I could make it far more complex, but if I'm ready to render the animation, all I do is click export. And basically here I can adjust things like the frame weight, uh, the sort of size, if you like, and basically how big the resolution is, right up to sort of 4K or more. So let's go ahead and click export and we'll render out that quick animation for you. So here you can see the result of a very short but really nice high quality animation and some other images that I rendered out just during the course of making this little video for you. Uh, you can also render things like axonometrics, isometrics, plan views as well. So they're kind of quite cool sort of diagrammatic views that look really amazing, as well as the sort of rendered perspectives with this wonderful global illumination and rendering quality that Enscape is famous for. So if you'd like to find out more about Enscape, please drop me a line or an email. I'm an Enscape reseller and specialist teacher and trainer, and I would love to help further.